Hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Dear authors and invited guests, welcome to the technical session 6A. Myself Anshika Jain and this session would be moderated by me. I on the behalf of Global Knowledge Research Foundation and GR Scholastic LLP, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 8th World Conference on Smart Trends in Systems, Security and Sustainability World S4 2024 London UK. The 8th edition of the conference is being organized in the hybrid mode. The physical event was organized on 23rd July in London, UK, and the virtual event is being held through Zoom from 24 to 26 July 2024. I hope you will enjoy the knowledgeable and interactive sessions throughout the day. In this session, we have six presentations. Each presenter will be given 12 minutes for the presentation and three minutes for the questions and answers. On 10 minutes, I will raise a very gentle reminder. There is another request to all the participants that you stay connected with us till the closing remarks. If you have any query or any update, then you can write it to me in the chat box below. Just before we start the session, I would like to introduce you all to the chair for the session. Dr. Tanupriya Chaudhary, Professor Research, CSC Department, Associate Dean Research, Graphic Era Dean to be University, Dehradun, India. Sir has 10 years of experience in teaching as well in research. Currently, he is working as a professor research, CSC department, associate dean research, graphic era university, Dehradun, Uttarakhand, India. His areas of interest include human computing, soft computing, cloud computing, data mining. Welcome to the session, sir. Would you like to share a quick opening remark with us? Thank you, Anish, uh, Anshika Jain. Thank you very much. Uh, we welcome you all in the Smart Friend in System Security and Sustainability in 8th World Conference at London, UK. All the best to all the participants. Thank, Thank you. you. I would like to also introduce our session chair, Dr. Mohammad Feroz Mridha, Associate Professor, American International University, Bangladesh. Sir is currently working as an associate professor in the Department of Computer Science at American International University, Bangladesh. His research work contributed to the reputed journal of scientific reports, Nature Knowledge Based Systems, Artificial Intelligence, IEEE Access, Census, Cancers, and Implied Science. Welcome to the session, sir. So, without wasting any time, we would like to begin with the sessions. First, we have mentioned to present her paper titled A Comparative Study of Korean Text Summarization Performance According to Architecture Features of Pre-trained Language Models. Are you there, ma'am? We cannot hear you, ma'am. I'm here there. Yeah, you may start with the presentation, ma'am. Yes, I, I'll show my presentation. And yes, ma'am, it is visible now. Uh, okay. Thank you for pre thank you for the opportunity to, to present at the World Expo Conference today. My name is Min Chi Sung, and the topic I'll be presenting is a comparative study of Korean text summarization performance according to architectural features of so pre-trained language models. This is the table of contents. I'll explain in all the introduction, related works, models, experiments, ex empirical results, and conclusions. First, research background. Recent research trends in natural language processing have shaped using the pre-trained language model that solves the various tasks with one model. PRM can be viewed as type of transfer learning in NLP areas. Recent research shows excellent performance by applying PRMs to various NLP fields. Another trend of NLP is the scale up of pre-trained models. The performance of PRMs shows a better as the size of corpus and parameter is increased. Next, results propose. Many studies have attempted to improve the performance through fine-tuning or scale-up by developing various PRM. 
On the other hand, it is difficult to find previous research analyzing which architecture of PRM is more suitable for the purpose of specific energy or energy task. That is, which architecture features of PRM is more profitable for specific energy task or means open question. In this background, I comprehensively analyze how the performance varies depending on the architecture features of PRM and the characteristics of infant tax data set. To analyze this purpose, tax analyzation of representative downstream task of energy was applied in my study. Second section is related works. First, tax analyzation can be characterized in two main types. In my result, I applied deep learning based abstractive text summarization. Abstract summarization creates new sentences with the same meaning as the ideas of the original document. Therefore, it is more challenging as it deals with your aspects compared to abstractive summarization. Recently, since the introduction of PRM, PR since the introduction of PRM based on the transformer, the performance of abstract summarization has improved significantly and results on it has become active. Next, transformer based PRM advances in recent PRM based paradigms are based on the transformer architecture. Since transformer introduced in 2016, Numerous PRM based on transformer has been suggested. Figure 2 illustrates representative PRMs over the years. In transformer based PRMs, there are three classes depending on architectures. Table 1 summarizes the architecture of P representative PRMs corresponding to the three classes. The third section is methodology description. This study used GPT and BART as PRM. GPT series consists of only the decoder in the transformer. Meanwhile, BART used encoder and a decoder in the transformer architecture. It portrays a model combined by directional and autoregressive transformers. In this study, I used the Korean BART and Korean GPT. As evaluation measures, I used the logic score, which are widely used as energy task performance. There are many variations of logic scores, and I used logic 1 and logic 2, logic I based on F1 score. Fourth section is experiment design in my study. This study compared the BART and GPT model pre-trained using Korean text corpus as called CoBART and CoGPT. CoBART and CoGPT have the same number of parameters and the pre-trained data set for learning PRMs to verify the effect of PRMs architecture on the performance of energy. Kuchipiti, released by Kakao and SKT, were compelled to explain the effect of PRM's parameter size and the amount of pre-trained data on energy when the PRM's architecture is the same. Table 2 is description of PRM's use in my study. Next, target past data set description. I used the various document data set to check how the performance of PRMs varies depending on features of inference text. I assume that informative and creative documents would have different features. In this study, I classify into informative and creative documents according to the sources of text data sets. Table 3 the types of documents and the proportion in the, in the experiment. This study considered as the features of text data says that the length of the original document could be dead. 
They get to show us the length of the original document. Next page, summary and compression ratio for each document. As seen in the figure, it was found that all the table informative documents was longer than creative works. Next section is empirical result. First, figure three shows a performance comparison for each PLM within each document. Based on the large one, but performance was found to be best in informative works. Within the GPT architecture, Kakao, which had the largest model size, had the best performance, and SKT and ChatGPT showed a similar result. Consider its model size compared to other GPT, the degree of improvement was relatively insignificant. However, there is a limit to explaining the difference in the size of parameters. However, creation showed different result. ChatGPT had the best performance in common, but the difference was not large compared to other PLMs. These patterns were similar in large 2 and large air. Next, I took a look at the performance of PLMs on each document was reviewed in table 4 to Six to explain it from another side. Overall, the part shows to be good compared to other PRMs. This indicates that using both an encoder and a decoder is more suitable for energy fields, even if the same data are used for PRMs. In the case of BART, the performance of informative documents was better than that of creative documents. GPT had a better summarization performance of information than creation, but the difference was insignificant compared to BART architecture. This can be interpreted that the feature of inference data affects the energy performance of PRM, and the effect is the architectures with both encoder and decoders are more. Next, in this study, the characteristics of inference data were simply analyzed by the document length, the word order, and the frequency of part of speech. I calculated the correlation between the original document length and large one for each PRM to analyze the effect of document length on energy task performance. As a result, in the case of BART, the correlation between the original document length and large one was low in all documents. In addition, it was confirmed that compared to BART, GPT is affected by both document length and features as classified by informative or creative. Meanwhile, BART is not affected by the document length. In order to examine what feature of inference data brings about these results, the world of the sentences and the weight of pause were calculated for each document. The results are summarized in table on next page. First, all GPT features had a minor difference according to the weight of pause, while BART showed significantly different patterns. Next, BART performed better when the weight of noun was high. Conversely, its performance decreased when the weight of verb of the verb, determiner, and adjective was low in all documents. This indicates that GPT is less affected by the pause or world order of sentences, whereas part active is more affected by that. Last section is conclusions. The contributions of this paper are as follows. This study analyzed the relationship between the architecture features of PLM and the characteristics of inference text data set on the performance of NLG and suggested selection criteria suitable for the task proposed using various PLMs.
In addition to analyze the effect of characteristics of inference data on energy performance, various documents with different features were used for experiment. To empirically evaluate the effect of PRM's octet features, vectors may affect the performance of energy work control in the experiment design. The limitation of this study are as follows. First, the evaluation taxonomization relied on the logic score, which poses challenges when assessing Korean languages. In addition, this study considered world only as features of inference data, world only made a substantial impact on understanding of Korean text, Korean sentences. Future results should be explored the relation between inference data features and PRM architecture as another sign. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Nice presentation, Ariti. Can you please come to the third contribution? Um, I'm sorry. May I have a question about uh, what the difference is in ChatGPT by Korea and another one? Any specific for Korean or? Yes, Korean okay. language I used. Okay, I mean, it's for the uh, international language in English. Any differences? Um, but I didn't conduct this point, but it's a good point and next result, I think. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you, bro. You're a good yeah, question. Can you please come to the 30 number slides? Slide number 30. I'm um, sorry, but I... I, I didn't your question. Could you repeat again? Slide number 30. Slide number? Slide 30. 30. 30. 3-0. Huh? In your presentation, the slide uh, okay. 30. Uh, okay. I uh, uh, presentation, my... Uh, how? What? One number. Next, next slide. Next. That's the slide. Yeah. Next. Next. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 In the previous, previous slide. Slide number three slide. zero, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, um, I'm asking to come to three the slide zero. number thirty. Three zero. This is twenty one. Uh, please come to slide number thirty. Three zero. Happy. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah, 30, 30, 3, 0. Uh, why? Okay, no issue. Please come to the next presentation, ma'am. Good presentation, uh -huh. indeed. Thank you. Uh, okay. Okay. We'll be moving on to the next presentation. Next up, we have to wait to present her paper title, Integration of Remote Sensing and Multivariate Linear Regression Analysis to validate the air pollution index in Binh Duong province, Vietnam. Are you there, ma'am? Yes, okay. I'm here. Yeah, you may please start with the presentation, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Can you see my slide? Yes, ma'am, we can see your slide. You may start. Yes. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, on behalf of our route, I would like to present the paper, Integration of Remote Sensing in Multivariate Linear Regression Analysis to Evaluate the Air Pollution Index in Binjung Province, Vietnam. Uh, we are from the University, Binjung Province, Vietnam. Our presentation includes four parts. The first one is the introduction. Binh is one of the province 
Thus, uh, experience strong urbanization and industrialization in Vietnam to evaluate the air quality on air monitoring programs is carried out with city employees. However, the reasons have not been shown on the map to provide a visual view of the air quality for the community. On the other hand, in order to assess air quality, a lot of researchers all over the world can also use remote sensing with the advantage of high resolution, high repetition rate, and briefly available. Remote sensing can show the spatial distribution of air quality clearly and immediately over a specific area at a low cost. Therefore, the study aims to evaluate air quality in Benjun province by building on a precious model between the Lancet data and the monitoring data. The findings from this study will be helpful for the government to develop a plan for air quality management in Benjun province. The next one is the research data. Uh, in this um, study, we use two types of data. The first one is the, uh, the Landsat image data. Uh, we use false Landsat images uh, captured in February and March in 2023 provided by the United States Geological Service for free via the website of Earth uh, Explorer. And uh, the second uh, type of, uh, the second source of the data is the air monitoring data. Um, this data is collected from Binjun Center of Natural Resources and Environment Technical Monitoring. Uh, the monitoring programs is carried out once a month at shifting uh, locations. The study is year uh, 30 points, um, 30 monitoring points to view a represent model and use the three remaining points to test the model. And the next one is the research methods. The first method we use is the uh, image pre-processing. After downloading the Landsat image from the website, um, this image will be a stack fence resized image according to the study area. Then the digital values of the image was converted to the pre plastic value at the top of the atmosphere to correct the atmosphere. Next, the image uh, indicates including NGVIs and VIs presenting for the vegetation areas and two other indices, including UIs and NDBIs, which presenting for construction areas, was calculated according to the following formulas. I will stand on the whole point. And next, we use the method to calculate the uh, APIs air pollution index. Um, this uh, index uh, was calculated according to the formulas um, I will show on the screen. After calculated the API, the air qualities were classified into five scale with five color uh, from the good one in blue to the very heavily ones in red as presented in the tables. And the main methods that we use in this study is the multivariate represent analysis method. In this method, uh, a preprocess models would be found to calculate ABIs from 12 input variables, including pre values of A pens from band 1 to band 8, and four indices NDVIs, VI, UIs, and NDBI. The represent equations has the following central form. As we uh, show on the screen. After finding the represent model, we tested the accuracy and the reliability of the model by using the correlations coefficients R square and the average errors plus mean square errors with the following is 
I saw on the screen. And next, we will move on the research results. Um, the first one is the correlations analysis results. According to our research, um, uh, the best model um, with the partic participation of five independent fair variables, including Ben 6, Ben 7, uh, NDVI, VI, and Pen ones, has the highest correlation coefficients. So, um, uh, these models will be used to test the correlation, the, the occurrences. The correlation analysis results uh, shows that the reliability of the API prediction models were tested. Um, show that um, the um, correlation respective coefficient values are square equal to 0 0.622 and the RMS is equal to 7.3. This means the obtained API prediction models is completely suitable for the air pollution assessment. And here's uh, next is the uh, results of um, API zones mapping in Bingyun province. Based on the pre-presence model, we can uh, calculate the IPR for the whole province. Um, and the, the, and the um, result um, you can see on the map. In general, there are about 83.4% um, uh, of the natural areas in Bingyun province have good air quality. 60.5% areas had average air quality. Just only 0.1% areas is polluted, and there was no harvest and are very harvest polluted areas in Binyun province. This calculation result is consistent with the results of air monitoring data performed uh, periodically in Binyun province. Hence, it is entirely reliable for applying in air quality assessment for the future. And finally, it conclusions. This results arm to build a linear pre regression model to calculate the APIs from Blancet A satellite image data and the environmental monitoring data to extract a map of zoning air pollution in Binyun province according to API. Research results show that uh, there are Five per trial input variable, including pen six, pen seven, and DVI, VIs, and P, and pen one, are uh, statistically significant for the model, with the birth values minor than zero point uh, zero five. The best fitting represents for instance, has high values of R at a zero point uh, eight nine seven and allow proof mean square errors at uh, 7.3. The M um, pollution map saw that most of the province had good quality, according to uh, accounting for about 84.8% of the total area. The areas with average qualities that are not uh, polluted accounting for about 50.1%. Only a few areas are slightly polluted, accounting for about uh, 0.1%. There are no heavily and very heavily polluted areas in Binyun province. This is a very important source to uh, um, information for air quality management based on remote sensing data in Binyun province. Uh, that's the end of our presentation. Thank you very much for your attending. Do you have any um, questions about my presentations? Thank you so much for your presentation, ma'am. No so, question from my side. Okay, so do you have any questions? Yes. Okay. So we'll be moving on to the next presentation then. Next presentation? Yeah. Next up, we have yes. an to it. Yes, another, another. Yeah, to present uh, her paper title. Producing organic fertilizer from agricultural byproducts and waste for the goal of developing 
circular agriculture in Tan Yuen City, Bindujoing Province, Vietnam. You may start with your next presentation, ma'am. Yes. Thank um, you, Anshika. Uh, thank you. Um, Sorry to say that I am having an urgent meeting. I have to go. And on my behalf, Dr. Bhupesh Kumar Devangan, uh, Professor O.P. Jindal University, Raigar, India, will be handling on my behalf. Okay. Thank, thank you Thank you much. so much, sir, for sharing okay. the Dr. session. Dr. Bhupesh, I think uh, you are here. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Please take care. Thank, thank you. you so much, sir, for sharing the session. Okay. Thank you. And a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Bhupesh. Thank you for uh, coming on the behalf of Dr. Tanu and sharing the session. Okay. So we'll be starting with the next presentation now. Please, please, sir. Yeah. So ma'am, you may present your paper. Hello? Yeah, you may present your paper. Yes, 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 thank you. Yes, hello again. And uh, now yes. I would like to, um, to recent another paper with the title Producing Organic Fertilizer from Agricultural Spy Products and Waste for the Growth of Development of Circular Agriculture in Tung City, Binjung Province, Vietnam. Uh, we are from Puyamok University, Binjung Province, Vietnam. Um, in our, con our presentation is group for us. The first one is the introduction. The next is materials and methods. Next is results and discussion. And finally is conclusions. The first one is the reason why we, uh, we conduct this uh, study. Uh, agriculture is one of the fastest growing agriculture sections in Vietnam, contributing to increased export revenue and income for many farmers. Vietnam ranks fourth in the world in seafood exports. Circular economic development is a common strain for green and sustainable economic development in the world as well as in Vietnam. Starting from the above viewpoints, a study arms to study the best organic fertilizer formula from the fifth bond slug that can be used effectively to replace chemical fertilizers in agricultural cultivation. This findings will be helpful for the development of circular agriculture in Minyum province. The next one is the research method. The first method that we use in this study is the primary data collection method. In this method, questionnaires were used to interview farmers' households, including vegetables and fish farming households, about their actual agricultural production. The surface care is in is uh, 50 uh, samples, including 30 fish farming households and 20 and 20 vegetable farmings. Uh, and the method tools can collect economic um, efficiencies, um, the economic efficiencies of vegetable farmings and feed farmings in the research uh, is, based on, um, is calculated based on the data obtained from the surface results. The indicator are calculated including Average number of crops per year, total production cost, product selling price, productivity per hectare per crop, yearly output, total income, profits, and finally is the capital efficiency. The third method is the method of producing um, organic fertilizer. Organic fertilizers is experimentally produced by mixing feedstock bottom slug with organic material, including peanut shells and coconut fiber, at different ratios: uh, ten percent at uh, treatment one, thirty percent at treatment two, fifty percent at treatment three, um, seventy percent at treatment four, and ninety percent at treatment five to find a missing formula for the best quality. And the and that's the method for analyzing the, the organic fertilizers. 
the uh, analysis of organic fertilizer sample was carried out at the uh, laboratories of Tuyumok University. And the parameters include uh, pH, organic carbon, total uh, nitrogen, total phosphorus, total potassium, available nitrogen, available phosphorus, available potassium, slit, calcium, uh, zinc, uh, iron, chrome, uh, copper, magnesium, equalis, and humidity. BS was mature uh, in a mixture of uh, 20 grams of soy and 20 milliliters of distilled water. And next we move on to the results. Uh, the first result is the realities of uh, snack kids fish farming in Tongue City. Um, the surface water area used for snack kids fish farming in the area is 40 hectare. And the productivity of snake fish farming is about 40 to 45 tons per hectare per crop. The average fish output is 80 to 90 tons per hectare per year. The investment efficiency is quite high. The rough is about um, 1.3 Vietnam dong per one Vietnam dong of capital. And the next is the reality of leaf trees, vegetable growing in Turkey City. The investment efficiency is achieved at a profit of 1.6 Vietnam dong per 1 Vietnam dong of capital, higher than fish farming. But it can be affirmed that the production of leaf trees, vegetable has quite high economic efficiency. Vegetable browsing households are gradually moving towards production according to the exact progress. Therefore, using of organic fertilizers in production will contribute to develop circular economy and protect the environment. And next one is the chemical compositions of the, the pet quality organic, organic fertilizers. The compositions of uh, micro uh, nutrition in the five treatment are different from each other. The highest ratio is in treatment two, uh, and the lowest um, ratio is in treatment five. The remaining treatment drug uh, choice with an average rate from uh, 0 0.23 to 12.33%. The values of uh, Carbon, nitrogen, potassium, oxide, available nitrogen, available potassium, and in treatment through or statistically significantly higher than the remaining treatment with a p value of um, 0 0.05. Thus, the missing ratio of 30% per when potent slot combined with 70% organic material bring the highest efficiency. This finding is similar to research results of um, that add on. The results of uh, preparation, the best qualities of organic fertilizers with the um, regulation on fertilizer qualities. Um, I saw on the screen. There are 15 plus 18 indicators of organic fertilizer meet the standard on fertilizer qualities of the ministry. For the three unmet parameters, they can be resolved by missing nutrients, agricultural by products material such as mushroom crops, residues, rice grain choice bean shells are in um, MPK's minerals into the raw materials. This finding is similar to the research results of Trung Bokho and Nguyen Kong Nguyen. Compared with the organic fertilizer produced uh, from, from the results of Nguyen Kong Nguyen, uh, that used lots from Bengesia's cows combined with the rice hogs, EM products and molasses, had the ratio of um, uh, NPK's uh, previously of 0 0.44, uh, 0 0.54, and 0 0.37. The 
The right role of MB is being organized for the licensed composted from the shirts of Wina Kings and Click by using script for the slots combined with Shrouders and EM products are 1.37 and 2.1. The city house that the qualities of the fertilizers in this study has equivalent nutritional values with the others. Finally, in the conclusions, reusing our cultures by products and waste to reduce our organic fertilizers in the areas is very necessary. Helping to resolve environmental pollution, reduce the use of inorganic fertilizers, reduce fertilizers costs, and especially help to reach to circular agricultural development. The study has provided detailed information about the realities of vegetable growing, fish farming, and economic efficiency from this model. A formula for missing bonds bottom slot with organic material at a ratio of 30% and 70% has been found to reduce fertilizer with the highest nutritional quality. The research is meaningful in the management and development of circular agricultural productions, capable of being applied to prisons with similar production conditions. That sounds for our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank uh, you so much for your presentation, ma'am. Sir, do you have any questions? Yes. So do you have any questions? No. It was a nice presentation. No question. So we'll be moving on to the next presentation then. Next up, we have Ali to present his paper title. The use of smart glasses to enhance eye health care from glaucoma patients, a prototype designed to remotely measure and record eyes intraocular pressure. Are you there, sir? Uh, yes, um, I'm here. Just let me uh, share the screen. Yes, sir. Please, you may start with the presentation. All right. Can you see it now, please? Yes, we can see it now, sir. You may start. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ali Albar. I'm a professor at Yomba Industry College, Saudi Arabia. So uh, today I will uh, present my uh, present uh, my research paper, and it's about uh, the use of uh, smart glasses or goggles uh, to measure and record the the eye pressure for uh, glaucoma patients. So to start with the presentation, I will um, um, set the, maybe uh, the problems. Uh, so according to the World Health Report, uh, 1.3 billion individuals worldwide has some sort of the vision impairments, and 36 million of, uh, of those people are uh, totally blind. Um, um, uh, it was found in the literature that uh, eye diseases uh, were the, behind maybe the main cause uh, of the blindness or uh, impaired visions. Um, unfortunately, um, uh, many of the patients, like the glaucoma patients, will not uh, see or maybe have any of the warning symptoms or maybe discomfort uh, until the damage has happened. So what is glaucoma? So it's defined as a group of uh, progressive uh, visual uh, neuropathics that cause permanent uh, alteration or damage to the, to the optic nerve. And, um, and, and unfortunately, it's untreatable uh, damage. Uh, as a recent uh, estimates, about 80 million people globally um, living with the glaucoma, and the number is expected to increase uh, to be uh, 111 uh, uh, million by 2040. Um, so there is currently there is only one method to uh, eliminate or maybe prevent this damage is by uh, reducing or monitoring and reducing the eye pressure. Uh, another type of disease, which is cataract, uh, which is the clouding of the islands and uh, prevent actually the, the, the passage of the light inside the, the eye. So it causes a foggy or blurry uh, image or pictures, as you can see in the, in the, in the, in the picture here on the left side. And uh, among one, maybe one billion people actually um, um, uh, has the cataract or maybe the cataract is, is one of the leading causes of distance 
we can say vision impairment or blindness. It's not a total blindness, but but it can affect you know the people life. Um, therefore, measuring the level uh, of clouding um, uh, should be actually uh, checked regularly and uh, determine the, the accurate time or maybe the best time to do the surgery and replace the lens. Um, another thing, which is uh, the diabetic uh, uh, retinopathy, uh, um, which is an, a common disease for the, the people with diabetes, uh, it's uh, increasing um, um, globally. It's affect approximately 93 million people worldwide, and this was in 2012. Uh, in 2021, an estimated 529 million people globally were uh, living with the type 1 and type 2 uh, diabetes. Um, by 2050, um, it is expected that this number increased to be 1.3 billion people um, around the world. Um, have it. So again, early detection and timely uh, uh, therapeutic intervention are vital, uh, very important. Okay, to prevent the pro the progression of of the disease um, and prevent you know um, the blindness in the future. Um, so due to the serious effects of the eye diseases, which is related to many different types of diseases, I just covered some of them. Uh, ophthalmologists emphasize the importance of performing regular eye exam or checkup uh, to reduce actually the risk uh, to control the eye diseases, the inflammation that can happen in the eyes, uh, to prescribe actually the right medications with the right or required doses. Uh, however, there are some challenges um, that can be barriers, okay, to these regular visits, including the long distance travel uh, sometimes required to visit the eye specialist in their uh, clinics, um, the difficulties in booking an appointment, okay, with those uh, specialists, and also the lack of affordability of the eye centers or maybe a specialized center in some um, uh, geographical locations. So these are some of the barriers. Now, what are the objectives in this research? Um, so um, there is actually a need uh, to create um, a prototype design uh, for a smart Google, or maybe we can say a smart or maybe virtual, not virtual, it, it looks like the virtual goggles, okay? But it is actually um, a goggles or, or glasses with some equipments that can help those patients to measure and record their eyes pressure from home. So a portable device could be a home screening device, a monitor the patient eyes, and also in a, enable the doctors from their offices to watch or monitor you know, the eyes uh, from distance. So in um, this design, actually, I used the virtual reality box to create you know, this uh, prototype. Um, also, the device can allow patients, okay, to use it at home, okay, to, to check the pressure and also to check the optic nerve, uh, resolving the barriers that I mentioned uh, earlier, uh, tracking the patient's actually IUPs, and create a database, or it could be like a history of the of the eye pressure for those patients, and uh, and can be updated uh, frequently. So materials and methods, well, before I go to the uh, um, a system engineering, okay, uh, components, I would like you know, to mention that there is a need for a collaboration between uh, the healthcare providers, the companies, the technology companies, and also the patients where the healthcare providers can um, uh, uh, provide maybe the patients or tell the patient about these tools and how to use them. And then the technology company can develop the software and hardware for these smart devices. And the patient can um, uh, give the, the feedback on their experiences. Now also further a development uh, of the integration of the smart actually glasses or these smart glasses with the electronic health services available in hospitals, allowing actually this direct communication between the doctors and uh, the patients, improving also the uh, the coordination of the care and without delay. Okay, this is also give us you know the options to visit maybe the doctors or to see the doctors 
not only in the physical uh, places or locations, but also online. Moreover, the privacy and security should be taken into consideration, uh, how to keep you know, the major records and uh, information. Um, for the system engineering, okay, I, I, I use actually in this research, uh, the virtual reality box, which is the v, VR goggle, okay? But I change actually the components inside and I put some other, uh, other parts that I'm going to talk about now, actually to allow the, the patient to measure actually and monitor the, the IOP and also to communicate with the doctor. Um, so, um, so here, as you can see from the other side, you can see here the nozzle and you can see the other lens. And inside here, you can see the HD camera that is installed for um, recording actually the eye and also streaming uh, the video. Um, and also it was found in the literature that these cameras, the, the high definition cameras, okay, like the 8K cameras, uh, can uh, add more clarity compared, you know, to the traditional um, uh, traditional eye examinations. Also here, there is a light inside that you can open and, uh, and then also will give, you know, more uh, light to the eye and then the lens can get or the camera can get you know more clear picture and also there is there is a, there is a possibility that to uh, project actually um the the eye on the biggest screen then the doctor can see it locally maybe or uh, from distance and also there is a possibility of uh, recording um so the figure here shows this um, the air nozzle uh, uh, combined by a sensor to uh, to measure actually the eye uh, IOP, and also there are other parts that should be um, mentioned later maybe the compressor, the regulator, the sensor, and other parts. Um, you can see here um, in the in the in the side pictures um, there is a um, a small air pump that used for this. Um, this design um, to push, you know, the air or the, uh, to the eye, all right, with the one to two bound per square inch, the base eye, which is very little. Okay, this is compared with the with the available now products in the market. This is also supported with the rechargeable lithium uh, battery, and um, and also um, um, uh, there are actually the the hose, the the air nozzle here. Um, with the with the hose, okay, uh, connected to be inside the goggle. So this is uh, the the prototype design. Okay, now what makes you know the proposed design different than available products right now? Well, there are several products in the market that can help the patients to measure the IOBs. But the problem that they need someone, okay, to take the the measurements. They can't do it by themselves. So they need maybe the like like in in clinics there are some specialized oh, nurses. You sir, but you have two minutes to conclude your presentation. Yes, yes, yes. And the device uh, they call it the tonometers. Also, they they need somebody okay to take the the pressure for them. Also, there is no available products in the market that can record actually these IOPs and send them uh, to the uh, online to the to the clinics or e clinics. Now, as you can see here, this is the process. The patients can wear the goggles and with a simple click can take, you know, the pressure and then send it to the eye clinic. The, the doctor can see, you know, the pressure and see the, the numbers and can connect with the patient. And also the patient can connect with the doctor to see and open the camera to see the eye uh, from inside. Uh, conclusion, uh, yeah, um, this design will um, be available, How um, hopefully, um, to be available uh, or valuable, sorry, medical tool for patients and doctors. Um, um, at the same time, the, um, um, we can we can use a record, as what I mentioned before, uh, a history for the IOPs for glaucoma patients. Then they can actually uh, analyze, you know, the the pressure and see, you know, when it spikes and when it's going to be low to determine maybe the right the medications or maybe surgeries. 
Uh, also, we can use the AI systems to analyze the data. This is diagnosing the progress of the eye diseases, determine the best care uh, contribution to provide the medical decision based continuous AI analysis, and also assisting a quicker, more accurate diagnosis uh, to arrange maybe appointment for patients with critical cases. Um, uh, so with the further co collaboration and investment, this prototype has the potential uh, to transform the healthcare and benefit ophthalmologists and patients with eye diseases. And also we need more research to test the reliability and the usability of this product and how to make it a trusted medical apparatus for uh, patients and, uh, and uh, ophthalmologists. Thank you very much. And um, it's the time for Q&A. Thank you so much, sir. Sir, do you have any questions? It was a nice presentation. Any questions from audience? You're welcome. So I think there is no question. So we'll be moving Proceed for the next paper. Yeah. So moving on to the next presentation. Next, we have Sandy to present his paper titled to, to Adaptive Learning Information System for Sustainable Higher Education Development Using Feasibility Analysis Based on Financial Parameters. Are you there, sir? Oh, yeah. Uh, can you hear my voice? I didn't catch that. Could you try again? Are you there, sir? Yes. Uh, can you hear my voice? You may start with your presentation, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Can you see my presentation? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, hello, everyone. Uh, first at all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sandy Prayogo. Uh, and our team are Muhammad, Mr. Muharman and Mr. Deden. Uh, for the title is uh adaptive learning uh. Information system for sustainable higher education development using feasibility analysis based on a financial parameter. Okay, the agenda that uh, we will be present in this uh, time are uh, research background, area study, uh, why cost analysis, and then a result analysis, and then uh, for the last is uh, the conclusion. For the first step, we will describe the research background and it starts from uh, four points. They are quality education, learning management system, adaptive learning, and cost analysis. And then how they are have a relation in our research. This approach can ult uh, ultimately increase uh, opportunity for young people to develop creativity and innovation, innovation uh, while uh, overcoming traditional geographical and infrastructural barriers that can hide their uh, access to quality education. Therefore, the implementation of LMS has contributed uh, to improving the quality and equity of education in Indonesia. According to uh, Brockhart uh, and Cotes, learning are not uh, only accepted to achieve the understanding and basic uh, competency in the subject matter, but also to demonstrate higher, or higher order thinking and uh, creativity skill. Uh, while Pransky say, uh, the use of a uh, higher thinking uh, skill in today digital era require a deep uh, understanding of uh, digital tools as well uh, as the skill required to use them. Uh, and uh, later say uh, access to digital technology allow to educator to provide uh, education uh, edu education to uh, the younger uh, generation through uh, various innovative method. Uh, nah. uh, next, the learning management system. Uh, LMS is an advanced IT system designed to support and manage the learning process, uh, facility collaboration between educator and learner. Uh, and it uh, distribute a uh, course material. Researchers often utilize uh, LMS to explore the teacher learner interaction, but, but it also serves an uh, valuable tool for various stakeholders including a faculty and study program in higher education. They are can seek the data and read the data to enhance their performance. Uh, the integration of information and communication technology facilitated by 
LMS bring uh, out uh, the enhanced effectiveness and efficiency in the education sector. According to Meng Hegar, LMS is an application uh, or software used to manage uh, online learning, which includes several aspects such as learning material, syllabus, syllabus, attendance, assignment, learning development, and assessment. Almerdes say the LMS uh, remain one of the most close, closely related to the learning process in higher education institution. And Lopez say LMS can be used uh, for assessment in higher education. And the Cote say LMS can uh, change the character of the learning experience in high, higher education. Uh, let's begin for, uh, for the adaptive learning. Uh, in general, the, the term of adaptive learning can be defined as a method to delivering learning material online, where learning interaction with a previous content influence the nature of the material to be delivered uh, in the next uh, week. Uh, this, uh, this approach implemented uh, automatically, dynamic, and improve active to interaction. The focus uh, is on creating learning experience that that are combined to individual needs. Adaptation can be displayed in our several technology elements like content, assessment, and a sequence. According to William Spendy, OBE is, is an approach in the education system which a clear focus and organize everything in the education system so that what uh, capability are important uh, for student can be done at the end of their learning experience. Adaptive learning is often uh, associated with outcome-based education, which has a close relation, relation uh, as, as both aim to increase the effectiveness of learning and achieve desired outcome for the student. Adaptive learning uses the technology to provide learning experience that are combined to individual needs, enabling the more personalized and re relevant learning experience. OBE are the innovation uh, method uh, that uh, focus on learning outcome that cover the domain like uh, attitude, knowledge, skill, and uh, setting clear for the goal and competency that must be measured. OBE emphasizes the learning process on the result by achieving by student the relevance of this material to needs and how student apply this result in real life. So uh, why we use uh, cost analysis within the scope of information system, there are several methods uh, commonly used in uh, analyzing finance by conducting a feasibility analysis based on a financial parameter. College uh, and stakeholder can evaluate the potential cost and benefit of implementing the learning information system and make informed uh, decision about a uh, research allocation. The analysis help guide uh, system development and implementation by identifying funding source, budget allocation, uh, infrastructure technology resource, cost saving strategy, and maintenance. Uh, there are several methods commonly used in analyzing finance, like uh, total cost of ownership can be divided uh, into two category, like acquisition cost and uh, ongoing cost. Uh, return of investment uh, is the ratio or uh, of uh, profit and loss from the investment which is then compared the uh, amount of money. And uh, for the last is a cost benefit analysis. It is a comparison between the cost inquiry and benefit of a feature or a project. It can be used a planning a selection option as an audit tool and a mean of a building support for polit political decision. Next, uh, the area of study. University now must uh, able to adapt uh, to the change par paradigm in the world of education to produce graduate uh, who are uh, superior and able to compete nationally and internationally. This is in line with the Indonesia's strong commitment to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs in education uh, sector. Quality education, uh, the fourth pillar of the SDGs, is the main focus of the effort to improve access, quality, and quali qu equity education in Indonesia. Uh, to 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 improve access to high quality education in Indonesia, especially uh, in remote and hard to reach area, LMS has become an important tool. Tinjen say uh, there is a strong correlation between the ability to adjust to new information communication technology and the intensity of ICT. Uh, with the increasing adoption of educational, 
technology, LMS has uh, become important tool to improve uh, access to to high quality education in Indonesia. Uh, and uh, access to digital technology allow ed educators to improve edu education to the young gener generation through the various innovative method. Why this research uh, using LMS from a telecom university? Because the telecom has been developed and used the LMS since uh, 2019. And the telecom uh, has won the Spada Award uh, in the scope online learning in 2021. Uh, next, uh, uh, why cost analysis? Uh, the process of developing and implementing an LMS in higher education Cost analysis uh, become an important uh, component to ensure that the investment is the in this technology are efficient and support uh, by educational goals. This analysis covers various aspects, ranging from implementation cost, operational cost, uh, and then uh, uh, maintain cost, uh, the feasibility LMS development and implementation as well to ensure that the investment resource provide a significant benefit to learning process and overall college operation. Since the investment in learning information system is very costly, it should be viewed uh, from various perspectives related to the opportunity that can be uh, obtained from the investment. Okay, the characteristic uh, of opportunity cost uh, in this uh, research, uh, there are uh, four characteristics. The first, uh, uh, the characteristic the characteristic uh, described uh, in this uh, figure uh, are illustration uh, that uh, uh, that explain that the analysis of the feasibility of information system investment for a university is not uh, only about financial but can be a subjective explicit or implicit and is a relative concept uh, of the opportunity to utilize of the investing invested cost Invest, investment in learning information system at Tehoa University does not only prefer to analytical financial parameter. In addition to traditional financial, financial analytic, uh, such as uh, return in, in of investment, uh, net, uh, net present pursuit, and a payback period, it is important to uh, consider consider the opportunity cost analysis by reduce by reduce the administrative. Sorry to uh, interrupt you, sir, but you have two minutes to conclude your presentation. Okay, thanks. An LMS enable college to uh, collecting research and more efficiency, which can support by development of innovation learning uh, program and in it innovation. This is uh, why uh, not always uh, financial, because based 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 on the, the data we have the we have collect it can uh, be called uh, conclude that from a purely financial perspective, the learning information system investment at uh, Telco University does not meet the criteria for the profitable investment decision. However, the investment decision should also consider the indirect benefit and strategic strategical value that maybe uh, can generate, which may not be fully reflected to a quantity financial analysis alone. Uh, the second is a relative. The benefit uh, of adapting uh, a learning information system includes several aspects that can improve the quality and uh, competency of the institution. LMS enable more uh, flexibil uh, flexibility, inclusive access to learning, giving the uh, student ability to learn anywhere and anytime according uh, to uh, their needs. This can increase uh, student participant and retention while expanding the geographical uh, reach of the college by providing a platform that enable more flexibility and collaborative access for a learning material. Thus, investment in a LM, uh, in LMS can be an uh, important growth uh, drive for university and uh, face the comp competition in an increased uh, education market. Uh, the third for the third is uh, subjective. By, util uh, by utilizing uh, the learning information system, the university can offer learning service to the external partner, such as a company or organizational, in the form of a, pro a provide a course or a special training program. Uh, the figure explains uh, 
that uh, the learning content uh, by Telkom University can be collaborated with the partner like Indonesia Cyber Education Institute to be used and developed together. For the last, is the uh, explicit or um, uh, implicit. Telkom University has uh, demonstrated demonstrate by a uh, result in uh, sporting by receiving appreciate from uh, the Ministry of Education, Culture, uh, Research, and Technology by awarding the online learning system or SPADA uh, university. This university can play a role in improving online learning. This award is given with evaluation result uh, in three categories, based implementation using online learning, based learning design, and support from institution, institutional for online learning. Okay, and the uh, conclusion. Based on the analysis and research uh, that has been done by uh, utilizing of opportunity costs, can encourage Telkom University to grow, uh, improve student competency, increase uh, user satisfaction, provide benefit to the public, and uh, increase uh, the popularity of Telkom University. Analytical uh, analysis of the investment uh, feasibility in learning information system needs to be done uh, comprehensively, not only limited to financial aspect but uh, considering that the investment in Telkom University is not uh, solely for uh, financial gain. Therefore, the inf investment decision should also consider the indirect benefit and strategic value. University also need to assess the long-term benefit that include to improve education quality, increase student competence and uh, satisfaction. Uh, in a border context, this invest the uh, this investment should be uh, seen as a commitment to educational innovation and human capital development. That's aligned uh, with the institutional long-term goals and sustainable development goals. Uh, maybe that's all What can I uh, present. Uh, please apologize if uh, there are any mistakes. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation, sir. Sir, do you have any questions? It was a nice presentation. So there is no question from my side. Anyone else can ask. Okay. So we'll be moving on to the next presentation then. Next, we have Suichi to present his paper title, World of Growing Situational Awareness. Are you there, sir? Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you. You may present now. Okay. I, I'd like to uh, share the screen, but then see it doesn't come out. But here. Sir, I have provided you the access to share the screen. It would be available at the end of your window. Uh, here. Share option. Oops. Green in color, you'll see an option for sharing the screen. Yeah. I hope you can see the screen. Okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry for the delay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my title is World of Growing Situational Awareness. Ashish Chief Kuda. So let's first consider the how the world is changing. Uh, one here is the third world, which was introduced by industrial society. And if okay. Can you, can you hear me? It's okay? Anyway, then I'll, just, I'll go on. I uh, see the World 1.0 is the industrial society, the uh, industrial revolution introduced. It is a product based so that it is a, a productivity and the product performance is very much important. As to increase the productivity, uh, I see the What's the interruption? I'm talking. Why are you interrupting me? Someone is interrupting me. It's okay, sir. You may continue now. Okay, anyway. The uh, World 1.0 is the uh, uh, society, the uh, industrial society, the industrial revolution introduced. In fact, it is a, uh, a product-based. So to introduce the uh, to increase the 
to increase the productivity, uh, a division of labor was introduced. So we are now we start to work for others. Until then, you see, in the world uh, 0.0, uh, we have we enjoy the you see a human life because human can uh, only think about the future. We live for tomorrow, so that everybody is to try to make his or her own dream come true. So it's a challenge. Uh, we enjoy the challenge. It's an emotional reward. But you see, the uh, animals, they live for now, so that the environment change. Uh, then some of them, you see, uh, go, uh, went, went out, they are extinct. And others, you see, uh, evolve, this kind of thing. That's evolution. But humans evolve this way, so that we are diverse. Uh, some of the uh, human species might uh, die out. But still, the others they uh, survive. So that's that's why the uh, humans are dominating the earth. Uh, and another thing that is very very important in uh, discussing about the uh, world 1.0 is getting close to its end. So that there are many issues uh, coming up. Uh, one of the big issues is the excessive consumption of energy. And in fact, uh, AI is you see at. Uh, very much talked about to uh, compose uh, to uh, you see this kind of problems, but in fact AI itself consumes a lot of energy, so it doesn't work at all. So the, then at the what you see world 2.0, which comes next, uh, we 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 would like to uh, have. So that's the main point of this uh, discussion of this uh, paper. Um, how this, uh, he, you see, uh, introduced the uh, uh, idea of the uh, human being. And in fact, you see, the, uh, uh, at first, uh, humans, just like animals, uh, we uh, look for the material satisfaction, so that we look for food and, you see, the lodging and these kind of things. But in the case of a human, uh, our, you see, uh, needs, shift from material to uh, mental, emotional. So at the last stage, at the final stage, a self-actualization becomes very much important. Everybody would like to you see, actualize uh, himself or herself in their own way. And humans are different from person to person, so that you see the uh, diversity increases. So that's why everybody is now you see, enjoying uh, their dominance on Earth. Let's consider world yesterday and today. Yesterday, uh, um, smooth uh, changes were smooth, so that the uh, we can differentiate them and we could, uh, you see, uh, predict the future. But today, uh, changes become very sharp, so that we cannot differentiate them, so we cannot uh, uh, predict the future anymore. And another, you see, change is that you see, our world was closed with a boundary uh, yesterday. But uh, now the uh, world is expanding very rapidly, so that it becomes an open world. So it becomes increasingly difficult to apply mathematical approaches. Another big problem is materials are getting softer and softer with the progress of material engineering. So the objects are now you see turn to software, so that uh, if we look at the uh, object, and try to print it, it doesn't work, then we would uh, scope it. So direct interaction comes up as a very important you see, uh, tool. And another is that we have to uh, uh, repeat this cycle, plan, do, study, act, cycle. And we repeat this cycle until we, until we can uh, the, uh, achieve our goal. Oops. So that's why I, I emphasize the importance of situational awareness. Booker is getting wide attention these days. In fact, uh, today's world is uh, full of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And in fact, life is changing every minute. So they, uh, they are nothing uh, other than uh, instinct to really cope with this kind of uh, situation and environment. For example, let us consider the uh, heat and flow in the air. 
uh, how can I do, how can we describe it mathematically? We can't. Uh, but our body senses, uh, can you tell us uh, how? So that is very important. Instinct comes up as a very important. We have been talking about tangible things, but we have to consider intangible things uh, as well, or in a, in a more in, uh, in a more way. In a, anyway. Oops. So let's consider uh, wisdom and knowledge. Uh, octopus, they have a very large head, but there you see a brain capability is very poor. Uh, that is why you see dog. But you see, why then they have a, such a large head? Is it is because octopus has an end arms and they directly interact with the outside world. And uh, their body intelligence is uh, no delay, it's a wisdom. But you see, uh, in the case of a human, we are, uh, you see, collect this body information and send them to the brain, and the brain structure them into knowledge. So it's a knowledge base. A knowledge base is, uh, you see, a uh, time delay. But what is very important in this, you see, uh, changing every minute, you see, world, uh, wisdom. So we uh, will have a lot to learn from octopus. And in fact, for example, if we consider human motion uh, trajectory, uh, this is uh, support this argument. Uh, for example, the, at first, our trajectories vary very much from uh, time to time. But as we get close to our object, our muscles harden and it moves together with the skeleton. So the, uh, we can easily identify parameters. We can easily apply mathematical approaches. So the control was a very idea in these days. But now we are, uh, we cannot do that anymore. Oops. To uh, solve these problems, I uh, developed a whole distance pattern approach. Uh, let us take uh, swimming as an example. Uh, water changes every minute. So this is the same situation as in the real case, in the real world, sorry. And if we put a uh, wearing sensor on a, on a swimmer, then we can produce a table uh, uh, shown on the right. So the each row corresponds to the each muscle at its location. And if the horizontal distance decreases, then we know that muscle is uh, using, we are using that muscle in the right way. But if the horizontal distance increases, then we have to change how to uh, move that muscle. In fact, we can see get the whole picture uh, by this uh, table because it uh, describes not only a distance, but only a, um, uh, how shall I say, uh, speed and acceleration. So we, have, we can give, uh, that gives us a whole picture of the everything. So it, uh, apply, it is very useful for all applications, all human activities. In fact, this is a application of Fourier transform. If you look at the uh, time uh, domain, uh, we cannot understand what we should do. But if you look at the uh, frequency domain, uh, everything is patterned so that we know that what uh, what we should do. So this is a very good, you see, uh, problem solving in this age of, uh, you see, uh, many, uh, uh, changing every minute, you see, world. Finally, I would like to uh, mention about communication. Uh, in the communication, wireless communication world, a sixth generation is coming up. And what is uh, they are now, you see, trying to achieve is uh, to sharing the atmosphere, sharing the feeling, you see, uh, we can uh, you see, communicate by feelings, uh, what the are, what the so listeners uh, think are feeling, and what are the speakers of feeling. We can share feelings, we can send, you see, convey feelings. And in fact, uh, this is very much interesting, because, uh, for example, uh, we uh, use the, uh, the, uh, this cartoon face model, Sorry um, to interrupt you, sir, but you have two minutes to conclude your presentation. Okay, well, in a, in a minute, I'll, I'll finish. So, we have to see the, uh, uh, we can see uh, even a static picture. We can identify for, from a cartoon uh, what the character is, uh, emotion, this kind of thing. So, this kind of things can be applied to many things. 
and it can all uh, enhance our activities. So with that, oops, oops. Anyway. Anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> it, 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 uh, the screen is gone. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your presentation. Next up, we have Dr. Abdul Wahad Samad to present his paper. Are you there, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, I am here now. Okay, thank you. Uh, please share uh, the screen, please. You may present now, sir. Yes, I, I would like to share my screen. Okay. Can you see it? Um, yes, sir, we can see your screen now. You may you may start. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity to present my research on a human research perspective an Indonesian uh, political process in a uh, democratic election in 2024. Uh, I'm, I'm here with, uh, I'm Abdul Wahab, and another uh, author is uh, Dr. Zaira Mega Utama and Dr. Eric Kamala. Okay, we're here uh, to discuss about the late research on the Indonesian political uh, development. And, and we used that uh, assessment for the implementation of democracy in Indonesia, uh, use and utilization of qualitative research uh, and viable software for analyzing uh, the development of Indonesian political uh, elections in 2024. Before I uh, have, uh, okay, I have uh, the study about uh, the Indonesian political uh, development uh, uh, did by Cristianto, Arinanto, and Gopor uh, using a method by uh, uh, a quantitative approach, quantitative research method, and finding that the influence of political institutional institutionalization through public support and the financial strength of political party and, and the existence of strong party structure significantly impact democracy. Uh, this is uh, relying on Mahatma Gandhi said that when you are uh, uh, working with the politics, uh, when you're uh, living with the politics, when you are starting your life with the politics, you will be have uh, some um, uh, refuses, some resulting, and, and finally you will get to it. And another reference uh, use about uh, this democracy, uh, uh, the study of uh, how the local community starts treating the democracy by uh, the, uh, the way of thinking. I'm, that means the Indonesian way of thinking of democracy. Uh, that was um, described uh, Indonesian's, uh, Indonesian's view of point of uh, the year democracy. And the role of the religions based on a political preference among the Indonesian middle class. I also uh, conducted a study by uh, Utami Iksan and Dan Dantanto in 2024. And what differences between our research and uh, the research before uh, on democracy issue it was shift from paper based to digital test, to digital what? And there was factors such as governance, uh, leadership, organizational partners, financial support, and transparency. This is according to Fernandez Shen and uh, Vlahu Gijar gives in 2004 on their uh, theory. And the framework sector also ruled in democracy. Uh, I use uh, to uh, measuring on the theory that the private company influenced democracy uh, development through research and development expenditure by corporate governance channels. So there is a relationship all, always uh, between uh, private sector and role in, in their uh, democracy. And do, doing uh, the N5 method, uh, we use um, 
uh, approach by uh, diagnosis of all uh, data set uh, provided on uh, quantitative research, then uh, input to the uh, qualitative research by uh, NFIPO applications uh, using their um, uh, survey or using their uh, questionnaire. And then as you find that the democracy of Indonesia gap, uh, it's being uh, measuring on, uh, we can here see, the political perception, uh, democracy implementations, uh, public rational information, democracy process uh, in Islam, uh, public participation and in politics, uh, post true politics, and democracy shaping itself. And according to the, uh, the processing in the uh, NFIPO, we have coding uh, such a democracy of shipping. We have here 0.39%. Uh, uh, we have still a low a democracy implementation, uh, even high, a second high, but still low, 0.70%. And democracy process in Islam is a little bit high. That means uh, that uh, uh, confirm that uh, Islam and Indonesia having relationship, it, but still low. It was for one point forty seven, and political perceptions uh, uh, it, totally. Uh, the point is one point eleven percent. Post truth uh, politic there was uh, uh, zero point seventy six percent. Public participation in politics. This is a little bit high, 1.89%. Uh, and public rational information are uh, still low, 0.46%. Uh, uh, and also, we are uh, connecting person class coefficient correlation between all the uh, variable, all the uh, reference, uh, a reference from public rational information to democratic process Islam. And Islam that we have here, the number can get in, uh, on coefficient uh, 0 0.37. And public participation in politics to democracy process and Islam, there was a little bit uh, lower, 0 0.35%. Okay, 0 0.35. Democracy process and Islam to democracy implementation, 0. Uh, uh, three, uh, 33, uh, public rational information, public participation in politics, there was 0 0.2, uh, public participation in politics to post-trad politics, uh, 0 0.27, uh, post-trad politics to democracy process, and and in the end, uh, post-trad politics to democracy achieving itself, there was quite uh, so, um, uh, minus uh, 0 0.01 uh, uh, one nine. That means uh, even even in the person's clustered uh, correlations measuring the politics between one and minus one, a uh, little bit uh, closer to the zero means uh, a little bit high. That means uh, post truth politics and democracy achieved today having a relationship in uh, an Indonesian development of democracy. Uh, so. If we can see here, uh, the implementation of, uh, okay, before, okay, before that, uh, okay, we have here the implementation of the uh, authority of the policy regarding to the uh, autonomy. Uh, the new order, democratic having change, yeah? uh, this is because the, the number, the, the, according to the, uh, the law number six of 2014, concerning villages and updated to a uh, number three of 2024 concerning second man of village uh, uh, relationship. I mean, this democracy uh, also influenced by, uh, this is a uh, new order of the uh, democratic changes. And all this, uh, all this, uh, the achievement of democracy, uh, we can say here, the implementation of the democracy is still low achievement, uh, political information rationally is still low achievement, achievement democracy process from Islamic perspective, still low achievement, 
community political participation uh, is low achievement, uh, post literacy reaction is low achievement, overall democracy achievement in Indonesia is still low, political perception in Indonesia society is still low. And the conclusion is uh, the current performance of implementing democracy in, is in, in Indonesia significantly lower than desired. That means uh, to measuring Indonesian from Indonesian perspective to the implementation of democracy, uh, it's say low. Uh, that was maybe different with, uh, with other country, maybe it will be different because this is a perspective of the Indonesian human relation, human, human research management. Okay, need for collaborative approach to the achieve Indonesian democracy uh, principle for the, for the next future, okay. Okay, this is my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I hope uh, I can get a question and I can answer a question as well uh, uh, to the research uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your presentation, sir. Sir, do you have any questions? Yes, Dr. Abdul, it was a nice presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. So I sincerely thank our authors for their excellent presentation and contribution in the session and all our participants for being a part of this international conference. I hope this session was informative enough. We, on the behalf of the whole team, thank you for your support during this eighth version and all the previous seven versions of the conference. We will be happy thank to you have you in the ninth version in 2025 as well. All okay, the speakers would be getting their digital certificates through email within two working days. And further, all the papers have already been forwarded to the stranger. The publication will be live within six months. Kindly cooperate with the team of World SO 2024. I would also like to thank our session chair, Dr. Tanupriya Chaudhary for chairing this session, as well as Dr. Bhupesh for chairing this uh, session. Thank you so much, sir. Would you like to share any quick closing remarks with us? Yes, uh, as I can uh, observe, the authors have pre presented papers very well. They have chosen the, you know, the realistic problem uh, which occurs in our society and provided the good, you know, uh, the, the research solution. So overcome those, you know, the research problem identified. So I congratulate all them and uh, I wish you all the best for your future endeavor. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, sir. This is a token of appreciation to the chair from the behalf of the whole team of World Expo 2024 and Global Knowledge Research Foundations. I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Abdul Wahab Samat for coming in this thank session, you. You're welcome. sharing it as well. And I would request everyone to please switch on your camera for a quick snapshot. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for your valuable presence.